I can remember when I first saw glass blowing, the excitement that I experienced, and I just I try to, you know, parlay that to anybody that comes to visit. So we started the pipe off of the uh, pipe warmer, which warms the pipes up enough that you can get the glass to stick. Then we come over to the furnace, and this is where all the glass comes from. It's 2,000 degrees. So we take the warm rod, we go down into the furnace to gather a little, it's what's called a gather is the amount of glass you get on the end of the pipe. My older brother was a senior when I was a freshman at Salisbury University. I saw the stuff he was bringing back to my parents' house. Shape-wise and form-wise, it was really gross, but it was like, just really intrigued me that you could make stuff with that medium, because I'd never even seen it before. Then we come over to the colors, and you just touch it down in there. So what this does is just gets all these little crushed up colored glass bits to stick onto the glass. So when I was starting my first semester freshman year, I went and spoke with the glass instructor at the time and you're supposed to have a lot of prerequisites. I just got him to sign the ad slip because I was like a really interested, excited freshman. So he signed me into the, the upper level art class, which was the best thing that could have happened to me because then I started blowing glass first semester freshman year and it was just really, really addictive. We're heating it up to get all those bits to dissolve in, to melt into the surface. So this heat is what infuses all the color into the glass. The more time you put into it, the faster you see results and the better your work comes out. My fourth and fifth year at Salisbury, I was probably putting in like 20 to 25 hours a week, and that's when I started to really see my work progressing a little bit. So I give it a roll on the table to put it into a little more of a cylindrical shape. A year or two, you can make stuff. In five or 10, you can make stuff that you like. In 10 to 20, you can make whatever you want. And now what I'm going to do is blow on the end of the rod, and I cap it with my thumb. What that does is traps air pressure in the rod. That air pressure, that compressed air, pushes its way out into the glass. You can see it gets a little fatter. So what happens is the compressed air pushes its way out. As long as the glass is soft enough, it pushes out pretty easily. What I'm doing is shaping the tip one more time, and then I'm going to give it one more burst of air. When I first started blowing glass, I never thought, oh, this would be a great career. I was like, this is cool. This would be fun to do next semester. This would be fun to do next week, next month, whatever. And then it just got to a point after about five years where I was like, how can I keep doing this? And that's when I started to think about the business end because there's not a whole lot of ways to do it after college. So what I'm gonna do next is start a uh, constriction with the jacks and Ariane's gonna give me a little air pressure. So go ahead and blow. It's the best feeling when stuff's going smoothly and, um, and your pieces are turning out well and you know my hands are working well with my brain and it's just all translating well into the piece. It's the best, you know, for all the, all the ones that aren't coming out right, it just takes one really good one that you forget about all the mess ups along the way. So what I'm doing is cutting in a constriction as Ariane does the inflating. All right, stop blowing. So this constriction is gonna allow me to get the piece off of the pipe once we're finished with the blowing process. The business all started when I was a junior at Salisbury University. They have just flyers that you could tear off the bottom or whatever and it said you could win $5,000 for the Bernstein Business Plan competition. I was a college student and I saw $5,000, that's about it, and I saw business plan, so I was like, how hard can that be? Which, which is the dumbest approach that was like, it was about a year of my life. I had been blowing glass a little over three years at that point and no way was I anywhere comfortable enough to open a glass blowing studio. But I entertained the idea, what if I did start a glass blowing studio? That would be so awesome. I wouldn't even know where to start. So it was just all this stuff that I never would have thought about otherwise. But this business plan forced me to start thinking in, in terms of making a business out of a hobby. So what Ariane's doing is now heating up a pipe that we're gonna to attach to the bottom of this bowl so we can break it free from the blowpipe and then we'll do the opening sequence once it's attached to the punty. With glass blowing, it's, it's uh, always something fresh and always something different. So what I'm doing is just giving a slow 
a slow pressure down towards the floor, which is slowly starting to draw the mouth of the bowl open. So ideally, we're trying to get it to open up um, wider than the base. Glass blowing is different than anything else I had ever done. I'd done a little ceramics and 2D design and you know painting and drawing. It never grabbed me the way the sculpting and three-dimensional aspects of glass blowing. I'm just going to get it really hot and start to spin and that's when the bowl is going to take the final shape. Anything that you want you can create out of the glass. So we're just looking to get it to about straight sided. So this is the final heat. As it gets hotter, I'm going to start to spin faster. And what happens is centrifugal force sends the mouth of the bowl away from the center axis point, which will just slowly start to flare the bowl. And you can't feel the temperature through the camera, but it's getting a little warmer in here. Now I'm going to spin faster, and you see the mouth of the bowl starts to spin open, almost to the point of like a plate. Then what I'll do is I'll come out, I'll spin, 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 angle down slightly, and now I'll slow my turn down some which will uh, collapse the bowl a little bit, giving it just a, a slight waviness to the mouth of it. Every day I hit on something, something different, or I'll spend a day making stuff that I'm not happy about. Sometimes that's the best way to find stuff that's crazy and different, is I'll be making something that I made all the time, and I'll see something in it, and then I'll, I'll follow that direction and you know run with it. And sometimes that's when I come on to my most interesting stuff, is just following the glass wherever it leads. I get a little water on the tools, which I touch down right behind the piece. So Ariane lifts it off, and I give it a little tap. And then we go put it into the annealing oven to cool slowly. What I'm trying to do is make art, make stuff that's unique, and I try not to make anything twice unless somebody really wants it. A lot of times I'll spend five hours on something that I love. It comes out exactly how I want it, and then it'll sit in the gallery for a year. Sometimes I'll make something and it'll, it'll you know, take a bend different than I was expecting, finish it, put it away, put it in the gallery, not loving it, but knowing that I'm still getting my point across, and those sell first. I just hope that in 10 or 15 years that there's just happy people out there all the time making stuff and um, that I still get some time, I guess, for myself to, to make my work.